guys, how you doing? Andy here. I uh, hope you're okay. Um, just had a little bit of time in between doing a Skype lesson and uh, an in-flesh lesson as well. Uh, Skype lessons are going really well. Did uh, going to do one uh, to a young boy in Italy who's off on holiday. Parents wanting to continue, so that's really cool. Um, and um, yeah, uh, I've just been doing over Skype um, a couple of Led Zeppelin songs, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, get down some. So this particular one is going to California. Now, uh, if you know the song well, um, there's mandolin going. I'm pretty sure there's a 12 string guitar, but I'm gonna show you a way to play it. Um, sort of simply, there, there are different ways and different tuning uh, possibilities, uh, but this particular one is, is quite easy. All I've done is I've dropped the E string to a D. So you've got, you know, you can play a D chord and that will sound great. But actually, um, for the beginning, we're going to be playing um, a D sus2 shape which is like a normal D, but you take off your second finger so the, the E string is, is ringing. If you want to know the technical reason why it's called a D sus2, what we're doing is we're suspending the, fourth, uh, the third note in the scale, which makes it major or minor. So that's a major, that's a minor, and we're replacing that minor third, major third with a second. Similarly, you can create a D sus4, which is adding the fourth and taking away the third. So you suspend the third, add the fourth. Suspend the third, add the two. And I think that's the vibe that's going on in this particular thing. Now you want to intersperse. Can you see the way I'm hitting the top, the top D string? idea about what's going on with your your right hand if if you're right-handed um, the way I avoid hitting the top strings is I actually angle my hand so instead of it just going up and down like that I've actually got it at an angle and it's coming down onto it like that it's a bit like cutting a bit of wood at a funny angle and that avoids me having to go up, down, up, down, up, down. I just angle it and then I'm hitting all the strings that I need to hit without the ones that I don't want to hit. So the beginning is... Uh... Then we go on to the... Um... the bit with the lyrics. Now again, I... There's a lot more going on into this, but what we're going to do is we're going to be playing 3rd fret and 3rd fret on the bottom E string and the top B string. Top E and the top B there. So this is actually a G5 chord. So all I'm doing is I'm leaving the 3 on the B and I'm making the E string Now you can you can either go three. This is on the bottom E now, guys. Remember, we've got that that finger on the B on the three planted firmly. You can actually go three, two, zero, and stay there and just hit that hit that D note on the third fret on the on the uh, B. And again. That lovely little. If you've seen a few of my videos, guys, um, you'll know that I'm not particularly into sort of sitting, sitting you down and getting you to count things out. The best way, absolutely, of learning a song, and I've proved this time and time again, um, not only with myself but giving students advice about this. If there's a song you want to to, to learn, listen to it. Listen to it like your life depended on it, and then when you need to actually play what you're playing, as you're playing it, so this song I've heard many, many times over the years, sort of mostly on a beach somewhere with a pina colada, um, 
no, I'm painting a picture that isn't really there. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I've listened to this uh, lots of times over the, over the years, um, and um, I've got it very firmly in my brain. So when I'm playing it. can hear all these little bits and bobs you know um, and at whatever level you play at you play according to that level you know um, yes we all aspire to be better instrumentalists better on our guitar and that's probably what's brought you here but never forget get the basics right okay um, if I don't know a song very well in my head um, it's one of the most horrible feelings in the world especially when you're playing a gig uh, so you know that happens to you a couple of times, and you you know I will I will spend 90% of my time listening, and 10% of my time trying to play a song. That's the that's the rough rule. Anyway, so we've got the intro. Then we've got this part. So I'm just playing. and I'm making a note to hit that three on the B. Back to the D again, D sus two. Now, if you're a bit more advanced, there is a lovely little line that I played a second ago. be playing the D with your two and three fingers here okay there and then what you do is so I'm just looking at my screen to make sure you can see what I'm doing uh, you want to slide on two on the G to four three on B five on B and then you slide from five to seven Five on the E, little finger on the seven on E, and do a little flick off. So let's just go over that again. Slide with the second finger, first finger on the B on three, third finger down on five, slide up to seven on the B, first finger on five on E, little finger, seven and five and then slide back down seven on the B back to five first finger on three yeah okay then you're back again to the The only other part, guys, is the, um, I don't know whether this you'd class this as a chorus. It's a bit of a weird construction, this song. We'll call it the chorus. It's the bit, um, it's a, it's a D minor. Now, uh, again, I was playing this with my student earlier, and it's actually a D minor. So you know you've got your A7 chord here again, I'm, guys. I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs. If you don't know D minor and A7, do a quick search on the internet to show you. Uh, if I've got to show you all the individual little chords and stuff, um, it's going to be a very long lesson. Plus, I talk a lot. Um, so D minor. Now there is another way of playing this though. Now this is what I will show you because this is unusual. Um, you want to play. You could use one and two. So first finger on six six on the B uh, middle finger on seven on the G can you hear that now I'm arpeggiating on those notes D G G G D B E B G 
actually just going down one, two, three, four, and then coming back up on the B and G. But because of we're over the fifth fret, you get this lovely little going up and then down and then back up again. If you can't do that nice action like that, if you're just starting off playing, you can just strum. Now the great thing about this, to play the A7, you just take these two fingers and you plant them up a string. So you, your, D, uh, your G on 6 now, and your 7 on on the D, and you play from the A string and down. Now what you can do is you can put your third finger down on 7 on the, on the G, and it gives you an A sus 7, uh, an A7 sus 4. here I'll just show you quickly. Open D and you're playing 7 and 7 on the G and the B. So that pretty much covers it guys. Um, um, I'm going to probably put the tab up for you uh, so you can uh, have a little look there. Um, I've got to go to my student now because it's 5 to 12. Have a lovely afternoon. Please subscribe, really appreciate it. And um, you know, uh, if there are any other songs that you particularly like, uh, I mean, due to the nature of this sort of uh, this work, I really want to be doing songs that are popular that will get the most views for obvious reasons. Uh, I, you know, get more viewers, and then I can probably diversify and do a, a few more obscure things for you guys. But um, if there's anything really hot that you'd like me to do, that would be just awesome. Uh, and email me, I'm available for Skype lessons, um, have a look on my YouTube channel Guitarworks1000, mail me info at guitarworks.org.uk. Okay, take care guys, bye.